welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. We've travelled down today to one of my favourite venues, Suffolk Water Park. It's a well-known venue, it's a great complex, offering a renowned carp lake at the top with some great facilities and three or four match lakes which we're going to be fishing today. We're going to be fishing on match lake one, the biggest match lake here, hopefully trying to show you how to fish the pellet waggler. We've got some great conditions so we're hoping for some good action. Also at the end of the episode we will be announcing this month's winner of the competition so keep your eye out for that and good luck to everyone involved. I'm going to set the gear up and then we'll get fishing. Okay we're ready to go. As you can see I haven't got much set up and that's due to the simplicity of fishing the pellet waggler to be honest but if it does get fished well and correct it can be one of the most effective. Quick bit of the tackle. I've got a real load of 8 pound line, that's just in case we hook a bigger fish, there's some real nice fish in here so we're just geared up for all eventualities. Rod choice, I use a 12 foot pellet waggler rod, now a lot of people, yourself, you may use a 10 foot, which is fine, the only reason I use a 12 is to find it aids my casting and the strike with your line pick up on the line, it's just that little bit quicker. That then comes down to my waggler choice, I use the Maver foam wagglers with a Steve Mayer adapter, just a lock and shot in the middle there, just out of the depth throughout the day. Comes down to my hook link, size 14 Guru hook on an 018 G line with a bait band on a hair rig. And that is pretty much as simple as it goes. My bait choice, again one bait, it's just 8mm pellets, nice and simple, no need to complicate things. The distance you want to be fishing out is pretty much as far as you can catapult the 8mm pellets comfortably. So what we'll do is we'll slip a pellet on, we'll get out and give it a go. This is the first fish of the session. It hasn't taken too long, I've just kept it going. One important thing to remember is to make sure you keep feeding. A lot of the time that's when you lose your fish out of your swim. If you've got people either side of you still feeding while you're playing fish. They will go off and see them. That can be the difference between winning and losing. Give a really good fight as they always do here. That's the first fish of the session. One thing I do like to do, as soon as you get the fish in the net, just one patch full while you're unhooking it. Keep that competition going. Nicely hooked. Pretty lively, but we'll see if we can get a look at him. Lovely fish, fully scaled. Beautiful fighting. Let's slip them back, see if we can get another one, keep that competition going. Well, as I said, the pellet wagger is a very simple method, but at the same time, 
is the harder you work, the more you're going to catch, really. My basic principle behind it is if you're not casting, feeding, or playing a fish, then you're probably not really working hard enough. And you can get a bit more out of your peg. On average, I'll be looking to cast probably every 30 to 40 seconds. Basically, the splash of your float plus your pellet just creates a bit of a bigger noise than what the other pellets make, and the fish just attack it. And as I said, feeding is pretty much as quick as you can, but only two or three pellets at a time. The other thing you may see me doing is every now and again I'll flick the rod tip, quick turn of the handle. Basically, what that does is it creates your float just to lift up. It's going to bring your pellet back up in the water, which then means it's falling back down like the other pellets. Basically what you're trying to do is never keep your pellets still. If you think everything that you're putting through is always dropping and moving, you're trying to imitate the exactly the same thing with your hook bait to try not to keep it alienated. Keep changing your depths as well. If you're not getting bites, go deeper, go shallower. There's another fish. Winds just picked up ever so slightly and doesn't always produce such good results when it's windy. Fish just seem to back off sometimes. Get them pellets going in. Try and keep your rod low as well. Should help them guide them into you. Rather than swirl on the surface out in the middle. It never cease to amaze me the amount of power these fish have in it. fish so it's right in the bottom lip always a good indication that you're at the right depth if you hook them in the middle of the bottom lip that's the sort of presentation you're after it's fish full of energy it's a mirror this time absolutely solid well let's get him back get back out there there's a few fish swirling hopefully that all that feed is really getting the competition out there going. We should have a few fish. Straight back out the same again. 8 mil pellet. As I was saying, you do need to pretty much feed as quick as you can. If you're not casting or playing a fish, you definitely need to be feeding. The thing to pay attention to is the fact that everything's the hand. I mean, the catapult goes on the leg, and bait tray, I know exactly where it is, so I never really need to look at my feed. I can always watch the float, the strike, and the indications. If you get in a routine of keeping everything in exactly the same spot, you never have to take your eyes off any, the area you're fishing. Keep going, keep your float twitching, keep that bait moving. <laughs> 